Mm-hmm. You know, a woman, she can give a child up for child support. She can terminate the pregnancy. I mean, the, the, the list goes on as far as what she can actually do. And that's not taking a shot at women, but I'm, I'm just being real with you. You guys have more resources than men. But um, as a man, again, you might not want to, but you have to do what's necessary to take care of your responsibility. If you're man enough to create this child, then you got to be man enough to then raise it too or be responsible with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, um, you know, like you said, no good soldier goes in battle without a helmet. But here's the thing. <laughs> that helmet might have deficiencies. Um, that it may. It may catch a hold in it. It may split. It, it, it's so many variables out there but the thing about it is again it goes back to if you are not prepared for the res- the the possible res- in results of that situation then don't do it i get it. It, it look i've been laying down with women for more than half my life so i get it, it, it it's a good feeling it's 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 all of that i get it um but for me when my youngest son's mother was pregnant, I made a decision and I said, I don't want any more children. So I went and got a vasectomy. You know, a lot of people say, oh, you did that so you could have sex with El Connor's like, no, <laughs> no. I did that because I don't want to put myself in a situation to where more children or put, I put more children on this planet more than I'm mentally, physically, financially, or emotionally to mostly prepared to deal with. To me, having two children by two different women is more than enough for me. And people was like, well, what if you get married again? Well, at this age, if she doesn't have children, she need to go find someone who can bear children with her because I'm done, you know, then I'm looking at the age that I was and, you know, what, 16 years ago, I was what, 30, 32 years old. Um, if I was to get somebody pregnant, I would be close to 40 at that time. I'd have been close to 40. And Mm -hmm. it's like, do I want to have children that late in life? Nah, you know, do the math, do the math of your situation. That way you can mentally prepare yourself for what you want to or do or what you think you want to do. And you eliminate a lot of that nonsense out of your life because we all make choices. We all make choices. Sometimes we, and we've all been there. We don't think about what comes after or what could come after those choices. So for this gentleman who had a situation with his ex-wife with their two children, I believe now my, this is my, uh, another thing that, that, that I look at with this situation. If you have that going on with your ex-wife and those two children, make sure that situation is resolved before you go start the cycle again and possibly have to deal with nonsense. Again, we weren't there. We don't know the ins and outs of the situation, but I'm looking at it like this. If I have two children with an ex-wife and we have a whole bunch of nonsense going on, I know for sure I'm not getting nobody else pregnant and I still have that going on. Because again, it's so much that we don't know And I can only assume that it was chaos and whether he caused the chaos or she caused the chaos, one thing's for sure. That woman is going to have some type of negative reaction to whatever he's doing to her concerning the kids that they have. And the fact that he may gets another woman pregnant and how she's going to perceive that situation. She's not 
if if he's if he's being a jerk to the two children that they got and they're going back and forth and he gets another woman pregnant, she's going to feel a certain way. And that's going to increase the chaos because she's going to be like, oh, you can't take care of these two kids or you give me all kind of nonsense with these two kids. But you're going to get somebody else pregnant, live happily ever after. No, I'm not. I'm not buying that. That's just my look on it. And it's crazy that some uh, females will actually think like that. You know, Mm -hmm. you're you're not going to just get with someone else and ride off into the sunset, especially having that new person uh, in your life and y'all are expecting. But Mm -hmm. here's the thing about it, right? (sighs) When it comes down to being in a situation like this, I know everybody's not rational. Mm-hmm. They're not. And that's the crazy part about it is I hate that you and the other person just can't sit down and say, hey, you know, we didn't make it. It's fact. We're never mm-hmm. going to be the same or how we once were. But the fact remains that we still have this situation with these these kids or this child. So let's work it out in between me and you. And the first thing should be, she should be asking, well, how much can you afford to pay me? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And as a man, you got to be realistic. Okay. Chop up your numbers and look at your numbers. Say, okay. Um, besides my cost of living, this is how much I can afford to pay you, whether that's weekly or bi-weekly or monthly. You two should be able to break it down like that. And if you have to negotiate, say, okay, well, if this is what you can afford now, um, let's revisit the, the, the topic in six months or a year. Yeah. Not only are you as the man responsible, the female's responsible too, because <laughs> you damn sure didn't produce that child by yourself. So, right. okay, if I pay <clears throat> this much to help on child support, this much to help on food, this much to help on clothing, you know, you, you have to break it down and make it even for the both of y'all. You know, don't just put it mm-hmm. on one person. Even if one person is making more money than the other, be fair and square about it. I'm telling you, there's nothing wrong with having greed, but when you are greedy, that's when you start effing up right there. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know, man. It's kind of like one of those things where we as people, we love to have fun. We love to get our rocks mm-hmm. off, as they say. <laughs> but right. at the end of the day, you got to realize there's certain repercussions that come behind that fun. Everything has consequences. Yes, sir. They definitely have consequences. So, again, if you want to be out there rolling the dice like that, like your ass in Las Vegas, hey, you got to be prepared when you crap out, too, baby. You got to be prepared. Gotta be. That's part of the game, too. Yeah, man. Gotta be. Gotta be. You gotta be. Um, it, it's it's it, it's just it's just it's just heartbreaking that, especially in our communities, that that situations turn out this way. You know, it's bad enough for a lot of us that are my age. We grew up in one parent homes, um, and you know this type of thing. I don't know how much it happened when I was growing up, but I do know that it did not happen this much. And it's like, at what point did we as a culture get there? That's the, the disturbing part to me because it's like, you know, we grew up in the era of the deadbeat dad, like Joker was just out the picture, gone, nowhere to be found. If she started yip yapping and blah, 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 you ain't see that joker. Like, I didn't meet my father till I was 25. I don't know all the circumstances around that, but 
that Joker was non-existent. And it's like, I would rather see that than what we're seeing now. Although neither one of those situations are favorable, but if you just walk out that situation, whether you pay child support and, and don't see your kids or you just wipe your hands clean the situation, nobody loses their life. Um, yes, there are, you know, mental and emotional pieces that have to be put picked up and put together, but no one loses their life. And, and, and that's the thing. Life is too precious for, for this stuff to be happening. And it is just heartbreaking because as a culture in our communities, we have way too much going on to add this to our plates. And it, it doesn't affect just those people. It affects everyone that, that could be remotely close to it. Oh, definitely. Definitely. I mean, we have so many things going on within our community. So it's, it's just sad. I'm not going to say what it really is, but I'll I put it nicely and say sad. Mm-hmm. Um, let me give people some pregame here. Cause I, I, I really feel like some, somebody needs this game right now. If you're going to play, what I used to do back in the day, I mm-hmm. put on two damn condoms. Oh, wow. I would. And, and in some cases, if I really felt some type of way, I would put on goddamn three. Really? That's extreme. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> that is extreme. That, that, that's the game that was given to me, and I played. Um, wow. But my reasoning behind it was, one, was... Of course, I don't want to have a child with this this female that I'm laying with. Mm-hmm. We just poking fun, as they say. I don't want her to take it seriously. Me and right. her pregnant. Um, but once we're done, you know, doing our deed, I go in the bathroom, take the condom off, put water in the condom, dry it off, and I'm checking for leaks my goddamn self. Mm. And once I see that there are no leaks, I take the condom. Probably already done tied it off, but once I tie it off, I drop that sucker in the toilet myself and watch it go down the drain. Mm. That's that's how I was back when I was doing my thing like that. But for me, wow. it was a, a a caution thing. Again, I didn't want to be chilling one day and next thing I know I'm getting a phone call come talking about, hey, we need to talk. This <laughs> we, we got a, 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 a situation on the way and you the father. Oh bottom. man. Like no the hell we don't. Mm. We don't have no kind of situation because I know for a fact there were no leaks. Mm. That that was just, you know, part of my routine back then. And again I'm giving wow. you the game so it help you out. One, mm. two, if necessary, three condoms. And it also slow down you having a fast uh, uh, disbursement. <laughs> it also slow you down from, you know, coming a little too fast, as they say, spinning oh, up a little too Lord. fast. Leave it to you to throw some humor in there. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, oh, man. go in the bathroom, put some water in it, tie it off dry it off, check for leaks. You got no leaks, flush it down the toilet. That's how I'm going to leave with y'all, man. Ladies and gentlemen, that's part two of Breaking Points, King of My Life podcast. I'm so touch a poet, my brother. Son, so Lex up in her. We'll be back because I got a follow up to this. <laughs> <laughs>